What is up my dear adventurers, Max again for Whipped Cream Media and today we're bringing you something fresh from the oven in this Archer Class Advancement Guide. So we've got a lot to talk about, so let's get right into it. Before we begin, I'd like to point out a couple of things first. Uh, number one, you need to reach level 50 for you to unlock this, so you better get those dailies moving. Next is you need to spend at least 20k skill points, so if you can, just finish your Abyss daily and reputation quests, or if you're willing, just top up, if you're willing. It sounds hard, it might take you a couple of weeks, but let me tell you that the EX skills are worth it, aside from the fancy new effects. As of the moment, you can only have 3 EX skills since the last 4 skills can only be obtained past level 75. And lastly, this is a pure analysis video with some tests since the content is still so fresh, but I have to give credit to Aldous from Outlaw and MD Luffy from Limitless. So for the first half of this video, let's cover all the additional effects from the EX skills. We'll be categorizing them by tier through the effect and how powerful or useful it is. There are no additional effects that are bad, but some just stand out among the others. Most of the effects here are self-explanatory, like range and knockdown. However, I do want to point out a couple of effects that might sound confusing, mainly diffusion, intersection, fire speed, and damage area. So, let's start with diffusion. Just imagine charge shot. In the previous release by Nexon, we only saw charge shot getting two more additional hits in a cone angle. The truth is, each arrow is treated as an individual cast, therefore multiplying the overall damage of charge shot by 3 if, and only if, it's casted in melee range, or if you're attacking in the wide section of a target like the dragon's belly. Next is intersection. Intersection on the other hand is like casting twice. A good example of this is the destroyer's flying swing. With the intersection effect, the skill lands a second explosion instead of just only one. For fire speed, on the other hand, is also another useful perk, as this increases the speed of the traveling projectile. There are times when monsters dash out of your skill's hitbox because the animation is slow, so this perk can help solve that. Lastly, we have damage area. Some players might get confused between damage area and range. The main difference is that damage range is basically hitbox range, which is different from skill range. Think of Spiral Vortex, but with a bigger radius. With that being said, let's move on to the next part, starting with the Sniper. Now, Twin Shot just graduated from an underrated skill into an efficient mob clearing tool. The penetration and pushing effects makes this skill even more versatile in both PvP and PvE. Next is Aerial Chain Shot. The best part here is the additional range. We all know how pesky it is to do dailies with this on your skill bar. The additional range is quite huge than expected and definitely stands out among the rest. Lastly, we have Cheating Point, yet another mob clearing tool that's more than what meets the eye. It's not the best, but it's great enough for those pesky minion waves. Moving on to the chain skills. So let's start with Charge Shot. Remember when I said that Charge Shot was disappointing? So, Charge Shot. I was really disappointed that they didn't give Charge Shot much justice. Now is the best time to take that back. It only has one additional effect, but it increases the overall damage three times if you cast it at melee range. Next is Arrow Shower. So this skill wasn't as good in the previous patches, but now it's one of the core reasons why snipers are so strong with that whopping 85% additional damage. And you can now cancel the animation once the first damage tick appears, similar to frozen spikes or triple orbs. I'm not sure when they changed it into a quick damage over time skill, but what's important is that they did and we're hoping that it's there to stay. Lastly is Siege Tense. Now, the intersection effect is mostly a mystery, but after comparing the Destroyer's normal and EX versions of Flying Swing, it's safe to say that you can expect this skill to dish out a lot of damage. And lastly, for the Sniper skills, we have the Ultimate. Now, the Arrow Barrage. The best Archer Ultimate is even made better with this. Pretty excited to see the damage in the future caps. Sadly, you can only get this when you reach level 100. Up next are the artillery skills. 
Now, starting with Evade Shot, while this skill is already great enough, the additional effects would have been better if it was range plus area damage. The lift is too focused on PvP, and area damage would have been made better for both situations. So for Swift Shot, Swift Shot was already horrible in PvE, but you might find this interesting in PvP. The additional damage is pretty small though. Next we have Detonating Arrow. So this skill only had two weaknesses, range and animation speed. I'm glad they took out the prior with the EX version. Moving on to the Artillery Chain skills, starting with Rapid Shot. So the EX version is not so bad. This skill balances the scales against the Sniper and the bonus damage is not bad either for an already strong and staple skill. Next is Triangle Shot. This chain skill was already a beast on normal mode. Let this be your staple skill if you decide to go PvP. Next we have Tracking Arrow, arguably the best EX skill for artillery. It's either they add more arrows or every arrow contains the base damage of this skill. Only time will tell as this can only be unlocked in future patches. And ending this section with the ultimate. Okay, so Revolution Ballista. It's not so bad. RB was always meant to shine in PvP. Now they added more reasons to pick this up when you're fighting in the Colosseum. Alright, the third class moving on to the Tempest base skills. So starting with Kickshot, I understand why they only added the lift for this since the base damage is already great. But I feel like Kickshot deserves more justice. They could at least just added some additional hits. Next is Binding Shot, from Cone to literally a Protractor. This EX skill further enhances the utility of Binding Shot to a ridiculous level. Next we have Spiral Vortex. I am happy that they increased the AoE of this skill. The additional damage is also a good bonus. Moving on to the chain skill starting with Multi Shot. Now imagine hitting this skill in melee range. Although it's not as good as Charge Shot's Diffusion, it's more than enough to finally have some interest in this skill. The intersection effect greatly increases the damage output. Next we have Double Summer Salt Kick. Now, a monstrous skill in PvP just achieved a place in the must have or else regret skills. The SK has always been a great chain skill that can be casted twice for every rotation. Next is Hurricane Dance. I am honestly sad because I can't see this skill just yet until we reach the later levels. But the additional skill effects aren't too bad, especially if you're in attack role. And lastly, we have the ultimate Divine Rage. You gotta say man, the bonus damage was already enough to make this skill interesting. I gotta commend ED's generosity for this additional damage area since Divine Rage's main weakness was that small hitbox. Last but not the least are the Windwalker EX skills, starting with Willow Kick. I love how PvP centric the Windwalker is for the new patch. The additional skill effect trifecta makes this even more formidable. Next is Blooming Kick. This skill is so underrated in PvP. I'm estimating the range to be similar to Binding Shot with the added effect, but I'm kind of disappointed with the 8% damage increase though. ED could have done better. Next is Rising Storm, the Archer's strongest normal skill just injected some steroids with that whopping 116% additional board damage increase. A wider range, a taller lift, and a couple of additional hits seals the deal with this one. Hands down, one of the best EX skills as of the moment. Moving on to the chain skill starting with Circle Shot. Now, I'm not sure what the additional hit was for. They could have instead changed this to range, at least. I mean, it's a nice additional damage, but the, the additional hit was totally questionable. Next is Cyclone Kick. Now, the pull effect alone makes this skill so powerful. Expect to have more accurate Cyclone Kicks once you get to have at least one hit on an enemy as it now pulls the target to the center of your AoE. Next is Eagle Dive. Finally, some much needed love for Eagle Dive. So expect this skill to be your go-to chain skill when you're in the Coliseum. And lastly, the coolest ultimate in the world, it's Spiral Edge. The pull effect makes this ultimate a must-have when hitting PvP or Guild War. The added utility makes it easier for your teammates to hit or cast their AoE skills. Just think of Black Hole, but faster. Finally, here are my thoughts for each new class. I won't be comparing them for their power because that's child's play, but I'll instead give you guys a brief description on their playstyles and where they excel at, starting with the sniper. 
So this class is the strongest in PvE at the moment due to the ninja buff on Arrow Shower. You can now pull off a 5 chain skill rotation per spirit mode. This class is also well-rounded in terms of PvP due to charge shots utility and wider damage coverage. This is the safest pick for now if you want to keep your archer habits. Moving on to the artillery, so some people might say that the artillery was nerfed. The truth is, it wasn't nerfed. It's just that the sniper class just got stronger. So if you're in favor of chain skills and have been pumping spirit obtain rate, this class will definitely tug your heartstrings. Moving on to the Tempest, which is basically the mid-range version of the artillery. To compensate for its range though, the devs added more utility and an okay-ish damage output. I have to say that the Tempest is the weakest out of the four since the core spells cannot be unlocked yet. And finally, the Windwalker. So the Windwalker's update in this patch makes it one of the best PvP classes due to the additional effects of Willow and Blooming Kick. It might take some time to master it since it's a completely different playstyle from the Archer in general, but once we hit the level 100 cap, it's going to be worth it. So, what class will you be advancing to? Let us know down in the comments and thank you so much for watching and we hope this guide helped you out in deciding what class to pick once you're done farming for those skill points. If you think we missed something, please let us know. And if you found this guide useful, please do like and subscribe to our channel for more detailed guides in the future. Peace, be nice, stay safe, and we'll see you next time.